Welcome back to the Real Femme Sapien YouTube channel where I give culture commentary and today we actually have a feminist who comes out and says, hey, I was an SLUT and I greatly regret it and I do not recommend it to other women. So if you like this content, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. Before I jump into this topic, I want to make something clear to my audience. Men that are frustrated with modern dating, I get it, I understand. You guys are tired of paying for used goods, if you will. But I don't know what was expected from women in a secular era that provided hormonal birth control. With that in mind, my platform exists to show women that there is another way that they don't have to take the path that their girlfriends are taking. They can go their own way and be chaste and more discriminatory with their sexual practices. But young women who come here that want to take a look at the video, if you're just vicious and savage in the comment section admonishing women for things that they might not even be aware are horrible decisions, then you're gonna scare these ladies away and we want them to stay. So keep it cool, keep it kosher in the comment section down below. Without any further ado, let's jump in. This article, I regret being an SLUT, was written by Bridget Fatassi and it went viral in August because she is a feminist who is coming out to speak against promiscuity because of how it negatively impacted her. And that is not often something feminists are willing to do. Both leftists and feminists would rather die than admit that they're wrong. So this article I think is really helpful to let other young women know that they don't have to make those same choices. Sexual liberation is such a scam. Prior to the sexual revolution, if a man got you pregnant out of wedlock, he was expected to marry you and be a father and now if that happens I mean well you can just take care of it or he can just pay child support I mean because you know what's the point of having a husband who can love you and cherish you whatever stop it get some help moving on let's check out this article I regret being a Upon opening Louise Perry's new book, The Case Against the Sexual Revolution, A New Guide to Sex in the 21st Century, I moved to tears by the dedication for the women who learned it the hard way. Unlike many other people who have read and reviewed Perry's work, reading her book wouldn't be some academic exercise in contemplating how liberal feminism has let women down. It wouldn't be evaluating what those poor sluts over there have endured in the wake of the sexual revolution. Reading her book was personal. I'm one of those sluts. I'm a case study for her thesis a cautionary tale I knew this book was going to be difficult and it made me realize it's time to finish this essay one I've been trying to write for four years when women have to deal with their sexual past it's very emotional and it can be traumatic and I think one of the reasons why it can be so traumatic is because you end up having an awareness I'm not sure when this occurs you guys can theorize in the comment section down below you start to process I had sexual autonomy and I could have said no and I didn't say no. Why didn't I say no? Why did I accept the sexual partners that I accepted? Ladies, if you're watching, yes, you can totally say no. In fact, I recommend being discriminatory in your sexual practices. It's probably the smartest thing you can do to protect yourself and also to reduce the baggage that your husband has to take on should you fall in love and get married because it's not fair to make your future man pay for the consequences of your past. That, that's not appropriate. It's a tough needle to thread. I'm grateful for the ability to control my reproductive cycle and make my own money, but that freedom has come at a price. The dark side of the sexual revolution is that even though it liberated women, unyoking sex from consequences has primarily benefited men. Shocking, I know, shocking. You mean to tell me that being able to be scantily clad whenever we feel like it because we're so free and liberated is not a benefit to men? Oh my God. It's a scam the whole time, I'm telling you guys. She resumes, I was first inspired to write this piece when a 19 year old woman I used to wait tables with asked me, Bridget, have you ever regretted having sex with a man? I laughed, yeah, all of them. That's not entirely true. There was my first love in high school and my first husband. But if I'm honest with myself, of the dozens of men I've been with, at least the ones I remember, I can only think of a handful I don't regret. The rest I would put in the category of casual, which I would define as sex that is either meaningless or mediocre or both. If I get really honest with myself, I'd say most of these usually drunken encounters left me feeling empty and demoralized and worthless. Absolutely. It's a little bit easier to cope with if you take the victim route and say I was used but to take the accountability route and to process wait a minute I allowed myself to be used 
that is really painful to come to terms with and highly recommend therapy if you're going through the process yourself as a woman. I wouldn't have said that at the time though. At the time, I would have told you I was liberated even while I tried to drink away the feeling of rejection when my most recent hookup didn't call me back. At the time, I would have said one night stands made me feel emboldened, but in reality, I was using sex like a drug, trying unsuccessfully to fill a hole inside me with men, pun intended. I know regretting most of my sexual encounters is not something a sex positive feminist who used to write a column for Playboy is supposed to admit, and for years I didn't. Let me be clear, being a slut and sleeping Sleeping with a lot of men is not the only behavior I regret. Even more damaging was what I told myself in order to justify the fact that I was disposable to these men. I told myself I didn't care. I didn't care when a man ghosted me. I didn't care when he left in the middle of the night or hinted that he wanted me to leave. The walks of shame, the blackouts, the anxiety. The lie I told myself for decades was, I'm not in pain, I'm empowered. I think that's what happens with most of this feminist narrative. The, I'm not in pain, I'm empowered. And I think what happens with young women is when they go to their girlfriends and they say that they're promiscuous behavior or their lifestyle has actually been detrimental and harmful because the girlfriend that they're confronting is doing the same thing and also in pain but still wants to remain in denial they will minimize the emotions that you're going through oh you're thinking about it too hard don't take it so seriously just have fun because they really don't want to admit that they're not feeling it either and so it's this loop of delusion that's going on between young women and the guys that are getting it are eating it up, okay? Like, these guys, they, they do not care. They do not care. They're out there at their peak testosterone. They want to get what they want, and they want to move on, which I don't think is that smart for a society that I believe is very lacking in nuclear families. But I can understand it that... Sex is more sacred for women than it is for men at times. Although I have heard a lot of men say that they do enjoy sex in committed monogamous relationships with women that they're in love with. And in fact, they prefer that instead of a random bar hookup. So I know that much. Moving on. Looking back, it isn't a surprise that I lied to myself because from a young age, sex was something I was lied to about. Long before I ever had sex, I felt ashamed of my natural sexual urges and awkward in my blossoming female body. Growing up Catholic, all I remember about sex was feeling bad about it before I even knew what it was. I only knew that sex before marriage was wrong. Even the thought of a sexual act or masturbation filled me with debilitating guilt. The first time I kissed a boy, I was convinced I'd be punished. Struck down by an angry, misogynistic god. Wow, this woman has been a feminist for a very long time. <laughs> a very long time. To, to think that God is misogynistic. Uh, God is a protecting father, but oh, okay. As I got older, I was told to guard my virginity. Well-meaning mothers and aunts were clear that I needed to withhold sex in order to get a man to love and respect me. Sex was a commodity, a priceless gem I had to hang on to that increased in value the longer I held it. It made me feel like property. And although I don't think that was the intention of the wise women who had learned their own lessons the hard way, for me, sex became inextricably linked to my self-worth. And that happens, I believe, for a lot of young women because we come into some inherent knowledge that we are sex objects to men. Men are success objects for us, don't get me wrong, but it is our own independent challenge as women to move in the world in that way to understand that we're going to be objectified. Even if we're not really asking to be, people will say, oh, men should control themselves more. I like to be very practical. The world is sexist and I'm not going to pretend that it's not. That is just my walk as a woman and a man's walk as a man is to be reduced to his wallet at times. It sucks to suck, but we're in it and that's just how our lives are going to be. However, I think the women that were trying to talk to her as a young girl were trying to tell her about something that she couldn't quite grasp at the time, that your sexuality and your chastity and your purity matters and that it is inherently valuable. I know plenty of women who have saved themselves for marriage and they are very happy statistically. These women tend to have high, higher rates of marital satisfaction compared to women that were more promiscuous. Male virgins seem to be the happiest, which I think is just a testimony that men are a little bit happier than women in general. <laughs> but that is not supposed to be an oppressive thing. It's hard to save yourself from marriage. I think we all understand that. I think that we all know that the flesh is weak. However, it is still the best thing you can do for yourself as a woman when it comes to romantic partnership. That's just my thought because I know every woman that has gotten married that wasn't a virgin wished that they had saved themselves for their husband. So... 
The shame and guilt I grew up with regarding sex felt oppressive. I resented the double standard that men could be promiscuous and it would raise their status and a woman would be slut shamed for similar behavior my burgeoning sexuality would unfold as a reaction of these repressive religious orthodoxies old school notions of sexual status and trauma i lost my virginity at 17 to my boss at a restaurant where i worked and a year later i experienced my first sexual trauma i felt damaged and dirty and i blamed myself everyone responds differently to those situations i dealt with the overwhelming shame by becoming hypersexual and promiscuous which is something that I would like to communicate to the male audience. A lot of hypersexual women out there are probably traumatized. Sometimes as women, we've traumatized ourselves because we weren't wiser to preserving our sexuality and our purity. Other times, we didn't really have a choice. We're never going to know the true amount of sexual assault statistics because you would have to be old enough to remember some of these things. And actually, some of the biggest victims out there are like one-year-old and younger I'm not going to get into that. That's something very different that I learned when I was in college for social work. I am just saying that there are some things that women have been through that their body might remember that their brain does not. Do I think that women these days tend to wield sexual assault very boldly and say, well, this happened, even though you might have seen a completely different story in reality? Yes, I understand that. I am just putting this friendly reminder out there that sometimes these women that you think are happy 304s are actually miserable inside and might be coping with something traumatic that they experienced in the only way that they know how. It's not an excuse for everybody. It's just an explanation for the ones out there that chose that route to cope. The culture was right there to pick me up and dust me off. I doubled down on being a proud slut and internalized the biggest and most damaging lie. That loveless sex is empowering. I basked in the girl power glow of that delusion for decades. Weaponizing my sexuality while convincing myself I was, a full, I was full of the divine feminine. I was full of it. I told myself that because I could seduce a man, I was powerful. But as Perry says in her book, women can all too easily fail to recognize that being desired is not the same thing as being held in high esteem. Deep down inside, I knew that to be the case. But as a defense mechanism, I crafted a man-eater persona. My mantras were rigid. You can either have a career or a relationship, but you can't have both. Intimacy is creepy. Motherhood and children are a trap. Sex is only about power a really depressing way to look at sex imagine a more cooperative framework where sex is the sacred thing that you share between a husband and a wife and hopefully you both have a joyful experience and you are both equally interested in providing the other a joyful experience feminism sounds depressing miserable i i don't see the appeal i'm sorry these are hurt people attracting other people to be hurt with them this is trauma bonding Another set of lies built on lies built on trauma. Sex isn't just about power. It's also about intimacy and vulnerability and trust. Things I wanted nothing to do with because implicit in modern dating is a complete lack of expectations, especially those of chivalry. Whenever a man wanted to pick up the tab or pull out the chair or open the door or pick me up or take me to dinner or see me during the date or wait longer than the first date to have sex, I was shocked and suspicious of them. Was he a serial killer? What? This is what happens when you allow subpar men to use you. You start to look at kind men with an unhealthy amount of skepticism. This is a common experience for women. Casual sex is fraught with insecurity and miscommunication. Intimacy and love are punchlines. When a man I slept with had the courtesy to reach out, I mistook relief for happiness, rewiring my brain to be grateful for the bare minimum. The saddest realization is how low I set the bar. A lifetime of allowing myself to be the other woman, taken for granted and treated like a doormat under the false pretense of being empowered, came to a head one night with the arrival of a text message from an on-again, off-again lover. Good night, baby. I love you. It said, quickly followed by wrong person. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I'm glad. I'm glad it woke her up out of promiscuity. I will say that. That's painful. Rock bottom doesn't always look like losing everything or ending up in jail. Sometimes it can be that sick feeling in your gut when you know emotionally you're done. I wanted to be able to have meaningless sex like a guy, but it didn't work. After years of writing for Playboy, I've learned it doesn't work for a lot of men either. For years, I tried unsuccessfully not to catch feelings. Even that expression is so telling about the way emotions are viewed regarding relationships as if they're a cold or the flu or some kind of sickness you need to get over. 
I'm not speaking for all women. I know women with a solid sense of self who happily love, who happily have loveless sex. This piece won't make them defensive, but a lot of women will read this and bristle just like I did when I used to read something that pushed back on the lie I'd built my entire identity around. And Bridget's absolutely correct. A lot of women are going to see this. They're going to be offended because of their own personal life. And then they're just going to come out and say that she's wrong instead of trying to figure out why they got triggered in the first place. If you ever get triggered by anything, and yes, it happens to men and women. We're human beings. People are emotional. You need to wonder why and what was the nerve that it struck. Or maybe you're a trans or non-binary person reading this thinking, what quaint ideas about gender and sex this old trad con has. And to that, I'll say it makes sense to me that the generation of young women who have experienced and borne witness to some of the worst side effects of the unyoking sex from consequence and love that Perry meticulously outlines in her book, Rough Sex, Hookup Culture, and Ubiquitous Porn, would take a look around and decide, I'd rather be a man, or more accurately, I'd rather not be a woman. But maybe it's the inevitable conclusion to the sexual revolution. Today's youth are being fed an even more dangerous lie than the one I was fed about loveless sex. I was told sex doesn't matter. They're being told biology doesn't matter. This is a tragedy. I'm not suggesting we return to some Victorian era notion of sex or some 1950s era ideal about gender roles. I'm now 43 years old and I'm in the first truly healthy intimate relationship in my life. With my second husband, we recently had a daughter, and in the wake of her birth, I've been thinking a lot about the conversations I'm going to have with her and the conversations I wish I could go back in time and have with a young Bridget. I tell her sex can be empowering when you're coming from a position of healthy self-esteem. If you're coming from a place of trauma or insecurity, casual sex won't heal that. In fact, it might set you back and undermine any progress regarding your feelings of self-worth. If you know your worth, you are less likely to sleep with someone who doesn't value you. Cherish yourself and you will be cherished. You shouldn't have to withhold sex for a man to respect you. He should respect you regardless. Sexual empowerment has nothing to do with how many people you do or don't sleep with. It has to do with how comfortable you are in your skin. No matter your decision, it's not about waiting until you're in love to have sex. It's about making sure that first you love yourself. Don't ignore the nagging gut instinct telling you sexual liberation leaves you feeling unfulfilled. You can still be sex positive and accept that for you, sex can't be liberated from intimacy in a meaningful relationship. I regret being a slut. I regret it because I regret that those men can say that they slept with me. Still, that's how I know I finally value myself. Every woman should feel this way. Sleeping with me is a privilege and you have to be worthy. I do have some pushback at the end of the article here. We're going to go back to the fact that she she's 43. She is on her second marriage, which that's fine. That happens quite a bit. But she just recently had a daughter. So she is 43 years old and a new mom. And if she had maybe had a healthier relationship with sex, she could have been a mom sooner in her life. A lot of women are going to see this article and they're going to think, oh, that can be me. Do not make that assumption. Make sure that you get your fertility tested first before you decide to run the clock, which I don't think is wise. I think a lot of the times we're running from responsibilities. And sometimes that's what sex does for women. We are running from responsibilities because it would be a responsibility to facilitate long-term intimacy in a loving, compassionate relationship with a man. You would have to work on your intimacy every day and he would have to do that as well. But sometimes it's a little bit easier to just go out there and get a new one, smash and dash and go on. And majority of the time, when I talk to young women about promiscuity, they are not getting what they came for. They are not getting the awesome O. At least if you're in a long-term committed relationship with a man, hopefully married, you can get that O every time if you learn how to do it. Okay, that's my perspective. Going back to the final critique, all the way at the bottom here, I think she's right when she says, I regret it because I regret that those men can say that they slept with me. I think that is how a lot of women feel when they wake up and smell the coffee. They reflect on the male partners that they've had in the past and they're like, oh my God, I cannot believe I showed that man the most intimate parts of me. Why did I not value myself more? But you didn't know what you didn't know. It's important to take accountability and responsibility moving forward once you do know. However, Every woman should feel this way. Sleeping with me is a privilege and you have to be worthy. I don't know about that particular statement because it comes across to me as very narcissistic. I would rather prefer the perspective that sleeping with me is a sacred act that is to be had between two 
loving partners and I wouldn't want to share that really special part of me with anyone else. So, okay, that is all I have for you guys in this video. Women, in the comment section down below, if you wouldn't mind, because I know it's really uncomfortable to say this stuff out loud, but some of you guys have anonymous accounts. So if you could come forward and discuss some of your regrets of promiscuity, that would be really helpful for the young women that are coming and looking for the platform. Again, I realize that's uncomfortable. So if you feel brave and bold enough to do that, I applaud you and I am so grateful that you would feel trusted in this space to do that. Personally, for myself, I walked away from casual sex when I was 19 and it was because I had an epiphany. Yes, I have control over my body and that is a beautiful thing and I can protect myself. But once I found that out, I never looked back. But I think for some women, they might not find that out until their late 20s, maybe their 30s, what have you. So if we can get a couple of girls out there to realize this young and quick, we can save them from a lot of heartbreak. I will see you next time. Bye.